$20 from Wood Panel. Summer Weather, World Cup, no way. Obviously, spending my week watching GQ is the only option. I agree. All right, everyone, thank you for waiting. We're back with Rocket Knight Adventures with Dagron. Dang. <clears throat> Right, so this is going to be done on easy mode. Uh, typically, the runs are usually done on easy mode. Sometimes they'll be done on hard mode, which is for complete masochists like Mike89. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess we'll get started here and not waste any time. Um, I don't have any game audio. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, oops. I guess I'll have to stay on the option screen for the countdown here. All right, we ready to go? All right. So get started here in three, two, one. Oh, okay. So you've seen Sparkster, you kind of already know what to expect. Um, this game does operate pretty similarly to it, but it's also quite different. That was a very tough jump I just did there. Yeah. Also, you're noticing me jumping a lot. This is also aptly called possum hopping. It's to keep my momentum. And uh, the other big difference between this and Sparkster, the run you just saw, is the damage values of my attacks. Uh, primarily, you're gonna see a lot of the base sword being used as the the main form of attack, there are... Oh, hang on. Oops. So this game has a lot of mini-bosses. Um, there are two different types. So this one in particular, it doesn't matter what type of um, attack you use on it. Every attack will do one damage, and then you'll have iframes, and you'll be able to attack again. Um, this one is a different type. This is more HP-based, so what attack you use actually matters and uh, he's using the sword swing and every frame that the sword is actually connecting with the boss does extra damage uh, so that's actually the best way to get damage quickly as well as the projectile itself dealing fixed damage when it contacts the enemy also you also have the different forms of rocket boost um, unlike sparkster it does matter which way you rocket boost for dealing damage an orthogonal boost aka up down left right the cardinal directions deals more damage than using a diagonal rocket boost you can also just use the Spiral Slash, which is using a rocket boost without directional input, but that's very poor for um, damage so management. So I actually got kind of bad luck there on that Serpent Head. You're supposed to wait for him to leave the screen uh, on the left side there, but uh, he went way to the right there, but that's fine. <laughs> that strat right there is a lot more difficult than it looks <laughs> as well. Yeah, the, the castle's actually a very, very janky level design, and it's very hard to actually optimize your movement here. Yeah. Also, if you like the side swipes, regrettably, uh, they're not present in this game. Yeah, the rolling attacks, unfortunately. It's the biggest difference in fundamental movement between this game and Sparkster, the one I just ran, that there are no rolling attacks, and so there's no way that you can use more than one boost at a time. In this game, you use a rocket boost, and after you finish the boost, if you're airborne, you will enter a helpless state where Sparkster um, just, you can't do anything with Sparkster and you will only regain control of him after he lands. Fortunately, while you're in that helpless state, like right there, you actually have full iframes. Nothing can damage you while you're in the helpless state. So there are some areas of the room where that is very exploitable. Also, you notice I'm draining my health down. Uh, that's pretty important too. Mm. Yeah, so same as in Sparks, do you get a life bonus when you end the stage? Uh, it actually counts down even slower than it does in, yeah. in Sparks. It, so it's you... more important in this game, yeah. That was a perfect fight. But nice. the, the damage management in this game, I would argue that the health management is quite a bit easier to maintain in this game because most of the boss fights in this game, you ideally want to do them either with a specific hit that you take somewhere to set up a position or just not taking damage. So for the most part, you can drain your health while you're going through the stages and enter the bosses with low HP. So coming up now is the raccoon robot. The repulsive raccoon robot. Oops. 
Yeah, this guy's a little weird. His HP doesn't actually gain a stable value and start decreasing until he swings his arms downwards. So, yeah, so I kind of messed that up, but that's yeah. okay. There is a mini boss coming up where there is a very tricky quick kill that Dag can perform, and I know he's going to want some serious time for this, so I'm just going to quiet down for a bit. I'm sure he'll explain afterwards. Nice. Nice. Yeah, getting that quick kill is very difficult. You want to explain what was going on there? Uh, yeah, so that mini boss, he he transitions between the foreground and the background. You might have noticed that waterfall there. He can be behind it, he can be in front of it. Uh, you have to kind of attack him on whatever side he's on, but um, as you can see there, he always starts on the back side. And I, I want to try to quickly kill him before he gets the chance to alternate to the other side. Also, at the start of this minecart section, Dagron just risked taking a death to save a few frames because yeah. <laughs> that's what he does. Yeah, most bang for your buck there. <laughs> yeah, uh, j just to let people know, I am going for pretty much the riskiest strats until I know it, it until I actually pay the price for it. <laughs> so. Uh, coming up here is a... Okay, good. Yeah. That's a very easy spot to die. Yeah, so is this as well. Yeah, so when the minecarts are flashing yellow, you uh, have full control, but when they're not, you're actually kind of locked horizontally to their position. So you can see he's moving around at the moment, but the um, minecarts following him. When they're flashing yellow, they won't do that, and you'll just die. Yeah. All right, so I also have four and a half hearts. This is the perfect health value for me. So I'm just going to try to kill these guys as soon as they come out. Just because, I don't know. I think they lag the game by a few frames if I keep them alive. So it wouldn't surprise me, yeah. Yeah. So coming up now is the main boss. Uh, Draco Dan, if you want to explain that fight. Yeah, sure. So this boss has three different phases. First phase, you want to just get right in this guy's face and use the aforementioned sword swipe. Deals a lot of damage very quickly. That was very nicely done. He's taken... Oh, there a, goes the chicken. Taking a hit here to moderate his HP because he wants to take one more hit on phase three. So ideally, oh. in the second phase, he wants to do this damageless. That's okay. That miss boost doesn't cost me too much because yeah. you might notice the boss is moving to the right there. Oh, oh, that's, that hurts. that's bad though. Yes, yeah, suddenly he went from having the best possible HP to the worst possible HP because he cannot take a damage boost on the boss's main body now because it deals two hearts of damage. So he's going to have to take this slower. Normally yeah. you would just um, keep facing left and let the body damage boost you okay. to the right into his main body. That's a boss fight. Yeah. I think what he may have been hoping for to recover it was to have one of the balls drop short and take damage off that, but it just yeah. wasn't playing nice. That's, no. that's very possible, yeah. Yeah. Um, the start of stage three coming up here is um, it's a very high risk area if you're not very intimately familiar with the movement. Yeah. There's a rising and falling um, like lava pool, and if you contact that while you are in control of Sparkster, you'll just instantly die. Very easy place to die. Especially because there are some jumps, such as right here, where you cannot see where you are. You just need to know where you are. All right. That was Break very through. good, though. Yep. Nice. nice. All right, so everything here is on cycles. So every boost here is pretty much calculated. Yeah, assuming you don't take accidental damage anywhere, because that can really throw off your patterns. Yep. Not. Oh. oh. I just got knocked out of it. Is that is that caused by subpixel rounding? I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure that's subpixel yeah. related. All right, here comes the mini boss. Got to take out his right claw here. Drops his health, and now I go for the head. This is pretty hard to hit, as you can see. So I believe with both the claws active, uh, this boss takes something like 45 hits to kill. If you take out the right claw, it okay. then um, removes three quarters of its yeah. current health. Yeah, so it takes only something like 10 hits to kill from the something similar, 10, 12. All right. So another R scroller here. Gonna try to drop my health down, uh, ideally to four and a half hearts. Yeah, the, the stage three boss is thankfully 
quite an easy affair. Hopefully I haven't jinxed it by saying that, but I can't imagine you actually making a mistake on this boss. Yeah. Bad luck at a GDQ? That's never happened before. <laughs> Well, I mean, I shouldn't say anything because uh, if anyone saw the hotfix race from uh, <laughs> oh a month ago, I, I did die on this fight, so... Yeah, but you know how to not make that mistake now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm coming into this fight. Three and a half hearts. So for whatever reason, this Lava does only three hearts. The previous screen does four. I, I don't understand it. Anyway, I am just holding left. And that's how you can dodge that whole entire thing. So there we go. There's my intentional hit. Yeah. So now this boss is going to drop some health for me, and then I'm going to grab that and then take a next hit to this. And here's the weak point. Nice. There he goes. And you that was that. the boss fight. You, you missed that. You got to wait about 20 seconds for him to come back up again. Yeah. Yep. All right. So coming up now is stage four, and this is probably the scariest run, or the scariest stage in the run. A very easy place for me to die. Um, so most of this will be taken care of by the, the couch for commentary, but I'll start by saying that this stage starts with a mini boss fight with Captain Flegel, and uh, we're going into a bit of bomb tennis here. I'm gonna take advantage of a couple of things. All right, I got the setup. Perfect fight. Yeah, nice. Rocket Night Tennis coming to a game store near you. Yeah. I, I don't care if you can do that fight consistently. That fight sucks. I yeah. Hate that fight. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple things I take advantage of there. The I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, every time he recovers from hit stun, he will throw a bomb in response, and he will always start by throwing two bombs. Anyway, time for me to focus oh, here. Yeah. I'm going to just take that one up for safety. All right. All just right. Hard mode strats. Go ahead, Draco Dan. All right, so this mini boss is a lot more dangerous than it first appears. You can see him dropping down and boosting horizontally into the boss. There are quite a few things that make that very dangerous to perform. This guy, as you can see, he's bobbing up and down. That was a very nice fight, but that guy's hitbox is very narrow and it moves up and down, so it's very easy to miss that. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, did not feel, I did not feel safe doing that last one. <laughs> I felt I jumped too, uh, too early, or too late there. Uh, Mike, did you find the strat here? Do I remember? No, that right? I think this was, this was either Mike or Yama or Vorpal when we first started learning the game. But, okay. um, it turns out you can just hold right in that, and as long as you don't um, do any sword swings on the ground because that stops your momentum, oh. uh, the lasers will just always open up for you like that. Yeah. Also, when you can enter this room here, you can actually just stand still, and this guy can't touch you with this attack. I don't know. It's. Uh... Let's go, strats. Let's go, strats. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. Uh -oh. Um, You've got health, that's fine. Oh. Oh! Okay, that's that's okay. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, this, pattern. Is, this is risky. I can't mm. remember the last time I saw this pattern. Look how close that was. Like, <laughs> this game's stupid sometimes. Just taking this ultra safe. This guy yeah. does two hearts. Yeah. Okay. The the transition from that <sighs> last robot phase into that final phase is especially dangerous as well because because of all the lag that's happening there, that guy can sometimes just run into you and straight up kill you even when you're attacking him. Yeah. A lot of lag involved. And the mistake there was that I did not get damage boosted into the robot there. And so yeah. I missed an entire cycle. Like, like he jumped at his body, but he wanted to turn left just before he contacted the body so that he get damage boosted to the right. Okay, so now that we got the, the scary stage out of the way, we got this stage, which is, uh, by contrast, uh, the most uh, relaxing part of the stage, because this is mostly an auto-scroller. That hit I just took there is uh, pretty much essential, uh, primarily because the mini-boss fight coming up, I'm going to be taking a specific amount of hits to him, and this will drop my health down to ideally two and a half hearts. Yeah. And uh, we'll go into more into why that is the important health value a little bit later in the run, or le level. Yeah. It is ironic though that um, Dag is right, that this is like one of the more relaxing stages to actually play. Shouldn't really be the case though, since once you're past this initial auto-scroller segment, virtually everything in the stage is a one-hit death hazard. Yep. So may it's 
pretty similar to hard mode at that point. Yes, but they're all very slow one hit, hit death hazards. Yeah, so. <laughs> they're all very avoidable. Yeah. Just, I mean, just be good. So I'm going to intentionally abuse iframes here. Also, yes, that is a Gradius score you're seeing. You are not mistaken. All right, so that's good. Three and a half hearts is what we want. So this next hit will do a heart. So there's something interesting about all sources that do half a heart of damage. The next hit you take from a half a heart damage uh, source will do a full heart yeah. of damage. It's just because of the way the numerical value is actually round. Right. Yeah, it's actually like a hidden quarter heart. Like anything, so you see at the end the life value. Each heart is worth 1,600. Um, on that life bonus. Oh, oh. Um, and any source that does quote unquote half a heart of damage is actually doing 1200, so it's really three quarters. Yeah, like the robots that are chasing you during these segments, as I said, it's instant death if these guys catch you, but this is a speed run, we go fast, that should never happen. Don't tempt it. <laughs> you pass them all, that's fine. Yeah. But now we're on to this auto scroller, and of course, if you get smushed, it's death as well. So. Yeah. Really, the key to this screen, though, is just to not panic. Mm -hmm. Like, as soon as you lose your cool and just make a reflexive movement, that's when you can actually risk yeah. a death. Also, diagonal boosts are the way to go here. Yeah. If you try to sideward boost, you could actually get bounced back into that into danger, it's not not fun. Like, they, they knew that this screen wasn't really fair with the way that they placed the one-up halfway through the screen. So that, like, if that you get stuck nice. here, you actually have effectively infinite lives to attempt this section. All right, so here's our introduction to this little platform here. There's no hazards here, so it's a good little, good little tutorial part of uh, this level. Because now they're going to bring this platform back, and now we got these shining spikes down here right below. And yes, they do kill me in one hit. So, which yeah. is kind of scary because I'm gonna do a boost at the end that does risk death. And this screen's about 45 seconds long. <laughs> yeah. So let's go, Strats and uh, Listar. You have time for donations. Awesome. Thank you. We have twenty dollars from Anonymous saying this is possibly the coolest speed run I have oh. ever seen. We have twenty-five dollars from Nobleboy77. Hey there, Nobleboy here. Great job oh. on the Sparkster run, Draco. Good luck on RKA, Dagron. Hope the Super Turkin 3-2 problem doesn't get you on this run. Oh. <laughs> Keep on rocket flying GDQ runners. Rocket our, boosts out. Our boy, Noble Boy. Shout outs to Noble Boy. All right, so here comes the risky boost. Got it. Yeah. Pretty much as long as you follow the gem trail, that shouldn't go wrong, but you can wait a little too long to start it and not actually get enough height to make it. All right, so you saw the mech fight in Sparkster. We're coming up to the mech fight in this game. Uh, nowhere near as hard, rest assured, but uh, there is a little bit of speed tech involved with it in the form of a dual exchange. Oops, that still works. Yeah. All right, so what's going to happen here is he's going to run away instinctively after a certain amount of health. Um, after the first time he runs away, I'm going to try to go for a dual exchange. So let me focus here. Got it. Nice. nice. And that prevents him from backing off now. Like, he has one hit left. Yeah. Normally, when he has one hit left, he backs off as far as he can to try and get away from you. But by taking a dual exchange there, it stops him from doing that. So it saves a few seconds. Yeah. But that dual exchange is a lot more difficult to get than it looks. Like, the amount of time that he backs off initially there is not set. So. You can't really gauge um, how long he's going to be backing away, and you do need to just react to when he lunges back towards you. All right, so now we're on to the space level. This is what uh, Toad and Whitehead like to aptly call the Gradius level as a joke. But uh, this is also Draco Dan's favorite level. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of tricky to actually do this level optimally. and. Uh, Perhaps I actually haven't gone over this, but the auto scrolls are actually probably the most random part of this game. You'd think it would be the boss fights or something like that, but we've we've managed to mitigate and find strats for them. And now it's just the auto scrollers and how they progress that cause any form of randomness. Yeah. Oops. The, the auto scrollers themselves typically aren't like com Oops. completely um, auto scroller in the traditional sense, and that's because in these segments. 
the next waves or sections don't actually start until oh, you have everything from the previous wave off screen. So like if there's still objects um, from the auto scroller present, the next wave won't start until everything's off screen. That includes yeah. if they drop like apples or yeah, such as oh, oh my oh. wow, this could be dangerous. Yeah, those rotating waves that come there, um, depending on what you hit, you either get a wave of enemies or a wave of health pickups. Daggeron has not gotten any health pickups yet, so this is sketchy. And taking a death in this stage is very costly because there are no checkpoints. Okay. okay, nice. All right, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Get the pack I want here. All right. Hold up. Hold up. Okay. Slow down. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. That's still not much health to work with, but I can at least use the bullets. So this boss fight does four hearts of damage. So not a, not a safe situation really at all. Yeah, even though I said there's no checkpoint through the stage, if you die on the boss, you do at least restart from the boss. So there is that. But dying on this fight's probably the most costly in the game. Like, this is a short level, but it has the longest boss fight in the game. Yeah, that's right. So, oh yeah, I should probably also give a seizure warning here. This uh, boss, every time he, uh, he uh, teleports, he'll flash a whole bunch of different colors. And uh, he's going to keep doing this. At least until his first his first uh, weak point is destroyed, which is right. Okay, that uh, should be the last time. Okay, you're safe now. Um, it's gonna come on. That's a bad spot. That is a horrible spot. So he's at least able oh, to get the quick kill okay, on the body like safe. that. But you need to wait for this body to go off the bottom of the screen. So. Him going up to the top like that and then lunging was the worst spot you could have gone to. Yeah, and like I and like I said, that the boss's main body does four hearts there, so I kind of had to understandably pull out before uh, danger before I would actually be take another hit. Also, this next phase is. Uh, He's really just doing the same exact tag patterns over and over again, so this is also yet another good time for donations, if you have any. This star? Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> we have $50 from the Mad Bicyclist. I love all the games you run, all the sleep I lose, and all the good you do raising money for Doctors Without Borders. Okay. Can't take another one. Next yep. one will be a full. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thankful. Still a fairly low amount of health to carry into the end screen, though. Mm -hmm. It's just one more cycle now. It's it's just four sets of the same cycle. All right. Yeah. This. Yeah. This blue laser can be baited out. There we go. Nice. So we are coming up on the final stage of the run right now. It is very difficult. I mean, Dagron said he thought stage four is the most difficult in the game. I think this is the most yeah. difficult in no, the game. It, stage four is uh, the scariest run for me to have done in the marathon. It's just the easiest place I could die. But uh, this is what well, I would consider this the hardest yeah. stage. So it, it, pretty much up to the couch now to commentate. It, cont mind. it contains the hardest fight in the game. With um, We had Axel Gear fighting Sparkster in the eponymous game Sparkster. That's going to happen in this game as well. The fight is divided into three phases. And the first phase contains the most difficult strat to perform in the game, which I discovered not too long ago. And I kind of wish that I didn't, because it really ruined uh, this game for anyone who wants to go for world record now. Um, in a nutshell, um, it, oh. it aims to try and emulate what the task does, which is gaining a bunch of frame-perfect hits on the boss. But humans can't do that, so instead I settled for making sure you can get a hit every two frames. If you have a very precise position, and if you're able to reset that position every few hits to adjust for the fact that he moves left by a pixel every time you deal a hit. So, that's coming up here. I'm going to be quiet and let Dagram focus on this. This is very difficult. Still more than fine. Yeah. That was still very good.
The fight's not over yet, but that is the most difficult part of the fight. From here, it should be smooth sailing. He does have some audio cues, though, so... If you notice there, he actually did a boost left. Uh, if you go off that edge of the screen, you die. <laughs> yeah, very risky. And you have to do Axel 1 again. That looks like a good setup. Yep. Nice. We got it. Very nice. <laughs> There is a lot more going on in that fight than it looks, and it's just it's way too much to explain in the mm. little time that the fight takes. Yep. Dagrant has a very extended tutorial for this game, though, so yeah. if you're interested in what's going on, then there are now a lot of resources for the game. Hardest room in the game? The Hell Room, yeah. Very and nice. And we got it. Very nicely exploiting the fact that once you deal damage to those guys, they actually lose a solid hitbox, so you can phase straight through them if they are taking damage. Okay. All right. <laughs> that works. As long as he doesn't get any horrible patterns from this guy, it's pretty much smooth sailing to the end of the game from here. This final boss fight is actually fairly elementary. So there's four different phases. In the first phase, the uh, weak spot will always appear in one of the top three positions. Uh, it's been really nice in the, in the middle. Oh. Okay. okay, that works. Nice recovery. Uh, this second phase starts off with this. Uh, if you're actually charging a boost during the diagonal lasers, uh, the game lags. Like, you look, get like three extra seconds of lag. It's ridiculous. I'm, I'm actually convinced that if I don't duck here in that whole laser phase, I actually lose frames automatically just from my idle animation here. Anyway, this phase here, I want to expose a diagonal weak spot. This does make him phase out sooner comparatively to... Uh, weak spots directly north, south, east, or west, so... Uh, in, in this phase, the weak spot appears directly opposite where you are at a certain point in the swing. So that's why he's jumping over it, uh, so it appears on the bottom. Yeah. And you can see exactly where it comes out. Right, so I have enough health here, so I should easily lift through the fight from here on out. But this is a pretty tricky phase. Yeah. I'm kind of just going by instinct it of when to jump. It doesn't seem to be entirely consistent where the weak spot appears, and it can appear in a very inconvenient location sometimes. Yeah. Thankfully, though, we um, every time he phases out, we have to wait for that weak spot to retract in first before he phases out. And this phase is not really a big deal. You can see it's the same exact spot every time I'm standing in this one spot. Yeah. And that should be the fight. Yeah, it's not time, but this is pretty much it. Like, from here, it's just one auto-scroller to the end of the game, and I think at this point, Dag's pretty much able to do it without even looking at the game. No, I'm not. I'm actually not going to do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> no selfies with the room? <laughs> no, no. I think Draco got enough for mm -hmm. one GDQ. For one GDQ. <laughs> um, I guess since this, the rest of this... Uh, run is now just one final auto scroller that lasts about I don't know, a minute, minute and a half. Uh, I want to take this time now to shout out to uh, a fellow runner of um, not this game, but of uh, another game I do run. He is actually commentating this game on the Spanish restream, and that would be Jim SR. And uh, who, unfortunately, threw Gunstar Heroes in the recycling bin, <laughs> uh, which is uh, kind of unfortunate, but I, I can understand how he feels after after that game. Do I have time for just one quick donation? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right, we got $20, $20 from WMD. Hey, Dagron, I'm the guy who accidentally crashed your game in the practice room yesterday. <laughs> 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 Sorry about that. <laughs> good luck on your run. Nice. That's as good an apology as any, I think. Mm -hmm. I do remember. It's okay. It's okay. I, no, no one prepares for things like that. We, we didn't realize how touchy the, the <laughs> cables were going to be. Time is coming up when the screen fades to white, by the way. Yes. And time. time. Huh. Wow. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm actually shocked that wound up just on the lower side of 
28, actually, uh, considering how that that fourth stage boss went. But yeah. yeah, good run. Good run. Thank you very much, Couch, for commentating for me. No problem. Pleasure. Um, I guess up next is this guy of five. So uh, get hyped for that. And uh, yeah, that was Rock and I Adventures. And uh, I'm Dagrin. Thanks for watching. Many congratulations to the amazing run. Thank you again, Dagron. Uh, we're going to go on a quick ad break, but we'll be back real soon. Don't go away. We have $50 from Snackery. Thank you to all the runners and GDQ staff for making this wonderful event happen. It's not summer until SGDQ is here. We actually have an announcement. Uh, our runner just let us know that a secret bonus incentive has just opened for, uh, what's the character's name? <laughs> oh, Nisa. Nisa? For a Nisa uh, unlocking. That will be $5,000. If we can get that by the end of this run, we'll be able to unlock Nisa. Fans really want the Neptunia fans really want it? I'm not sure what that means, but thank you. $100 from D Rust, or Dry Rust. New year for GDQ, so new donations to help people. You're always awesome. Let's go, speedrunners. Do the best. Ryujin donates $50. Happy summer, GDQ. Thanks to GDQ and Doctors Without Borders for all their work. Money is going to the Disgaea 2 story arc for the D5 playthrough later today because Adele and Rosalyn. If you're looking for some incentives, we do still have Mega Man X2 that will be later tonight. 
at 6,600 out of 2, uh, 25,000. Kill the animals versus save the animals. Kill the animals is a little bit ahead, so if you want to save those poor animals, which I say you should, uh, we are about $200 behind. All right, everyone, we're going up to the interview. I've been Listar, and I will be signing off. So thank you all so much for watching, and uh, stay tuned for Disgaea 5 and the Pikmin 3 interview. And welcome, everyone, back to Summer Games Done Quick 2018. I am Spike Machida, and I am honored to be joined now by 360 Chrism. How you doing, buddy? Hey, man, thanks for having me. I'm really excited for my run. It's going to come up in a, in a bit. I remember being in your stream not that long ago, and you feeling like, you know, you had just done, it was actually the prior time you had done Super Mario Galaxy. You've mm -hmm. done, you know, I believe those have been your last two GDQ runs were each of your renditions of Galaxy. Yeah. And after the first one, you thought, I might not be running any more games in the GDQ. And, and one of the games that you well, really sad about not showing off was Pikmin 3. So there's like these main games I, I started running, and it was the, the Mario game. I, I, I showed Sunshine 64 Galaxy, which is like the stuff I mainly run. What a trifecta run. that you yeah, got I know. to run in a GDQ. And uh, I really wanted to show a game that's not Mario. Be sure. Because I. I like running more than just Mario. So uh, Pikmin getting accepted was just huge for me. I, uh, I, I absolutely love Pikmin. Yeah, I want to actually go ahead and jump right into a social media question then, because that connects right into it. From Sir Shadi here, what got you inspired into running the Pikmin series? Because immediately, I don't look at, I, I played Pikmin 1 and 2. I, it, it doesn't immediately show to me like Mario, maybe that style. What got you into that specifically? Um, Back in 2013, when I was exploring what games I like to speedrun, I, I started running Super Mario Sunshine and Super Mario 64, and naturally uh, tried to find some more games I like running, and I just went with my favorite game franchises, Mario, Pikmin, Pokemon. Sure. And uh, pick, pick, started with Pikmin 1, and then once Pikmin 3 came out, I was all over that game. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about it's. I, I know you had kind of alluded to how exciting it was for you to see Pikmin finally get in. Like, was it a huge shock for you when it almost like the Christmas present you didn't know you were going to get? So, GDQ accepted Pikmin 3 last time as a backup run. Oh, okay. So, you were so it was alluded I, to a little bit. There was, uh, there was a chance, I want to say. Sure. And. Uh, so, I thought it might have a little bit better odds this time. Sure. And uh, yeah, we went with any percent, shortest one for now mm -hmm. of the main categories. So maybe next next time the uh, the longer category. Yeah, yeah. If I it's wanna, a good show, if it's a good I wanna show. I want to actually talk about that. And like, regardless, I want to put any pressure on, but yeah. like, regardless of whether it's shown a GEQ or not, or not, we're going to see any percent here, about an hour long category. But a little under a two hour category, we actually have the next level up, and that is all fruits, all, I believe. So any percent finishes the game in seven in game days. Mm -hmm. And all fruits just adds three more to complete everything. To have the completionist. Yeah. I know you're big on completionists, all the different yeah. games play, the Mario. Get and all everything that. collected. And it's actually not just under two, it's already under 130. Oh, I didn't they, know I got that short. My the bad. difference between any percent and all fruits is only 40 minutes now to, to collect literally everything. Wow. I want to go ahead and kick it over to uh, Caitlin has a question for you. Hi, Chrism. Hi, Caitlin. <laughs> what are you most looking forward to showing off in this run? Um, just overall, every the boss fights. Every oh, every sure. level has a boss fight, which uh, they are really well designed and really fun. The final boss is awesome. It's a big mess that's oh, yeah. fun to watch, probably and fun to play. And then what I'm really looking forward to is the donation incentive, which was already met. Um, yeah, it tells a little bit about mission, that. Mission mode, which is off uh, off story mode bonus levels, and the mission mode really focuses on multitasking. There's three captains in three different areas of the map all doing different things. And in, in any percent, it's more straightforward. There's one objective. Mostly all three captains work towards the one objective rather than three different ones. So mission mode is, is really close to uh, all fruits. Oh, sure. It's actually crazy how different any percent and all fruits are. Oh, any really? percent very straightforward. It's not just adding more to it. It actually changes a lot it of It changes every, the, the whole route, everything. And mission mode is like a little peak. It's a like five-minute run that shows you what, uh, what, Pik what Pikmin 3 is actually all about. 
Well, that's awesome to see. You know, you kind of hope when these games, you know, they don't get as many opportunities of these major marathons. You know, it's been four and a half years, I believe, since Pikmin 3 was last run in the GDQ. It four and a half GDQ years. 2014. You know, maybe you'll run today. Not put any extra pressure on you. Just get up there and have fun. But maybe it can almost be like a gateway into showing more Pikmin runs. I hope so. I hope so. Even if, it's, even if it's not me, Pikmin and GDQ, I think, uh, deserves more show. And we were just talking about Pikmin 2. I don't even know. <laughs> this is a, like, I, I analyze this stuff all the time. Pikmin 2. Never Pik been Pikmin 1 was shown twice, and Pikmin 3 was shown twice uh, with this one. And Pikmin, Pikmin 2 never. Do you have uh, any analysis of why that we, is? We th uh, well, I think it's, it's because Pikmin 2 is a bit longer. Any percent takes an hour 50 for a, good, a really good runner. Sure. Um, but it's not, it's not a bad game, not a bad speed game. It's, it's better than one. <laughs> 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 uh, it's, it's a fun game, maybe one day. So I got one final question here from social media I want to ask you. We got Doom Guy Fiery. Asking if someone is interested in running Pikmin 3, or I, I would mm -hmm. say any of the Pikmin games, where should they start? Um, if you go to speedrun.com slash Pikmin, you can find uh, our Discord. We have a Pikmin speedrunning Discord. And you can ask all kinds of questions. We're always excited to see someone new trying to start speedrunning Pikmin. And uh, that's a good uh, way to start. And then also try uh, picking, picking your game out of the, the sure. three. It's basically five because Pikmin 1 and 2 both have two different versions, the GameCube and the Wii one. Mm -hmm. And basically everything's viable, so it's all, it's all up to you what you want to play. Do you have a specific reason why you picked Pikmin 3 to put a lot more time into out of all of them? Just right. your favorite, or? Well, yeah, uh, it is my favorite. Pikmin 3 is my favorite. Um, it has the best controls, the nicest graphics, and uh, it's a little shorter compared to Pikmin 2, but it, I still love it overall. Uh, I started with Pikmin 1. Pikmin 1 is very hard. It's, oh, it is? It's a very, the Pikmin AI is very stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they just, one, one Pikmin trips and pulls an aggro from a, from a monster and then your whole team dies. Oh no. And it's not even your fault, you know? <laughs> so Pik, Pikmin 1's very hard. It's still a good run, it's just very, very frustrating. Uh -huh. Pikmin 2 is ba on the same side, but not as bad. It's very difficult too, but sure. manageable. And Pikmin 3 is the easiest one, okay. um, but if you're, if you're going high level speedruns, it doesn't matter how hard the game is initially, sure. it's, it's how far you push yourself, really. Yeah, like you said, there's just, it seems like a speed game, and you correct me, it seems like a speed game where there's an incredible amount of depth that you can go into yeah. with just all the multi, it's not just a platformer where, you know, I run platformers all the time, where you're just getting from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen, optimizing your movement. It's all of these, you know, this army that you're having to control yeah. at the same time. Every, so. every Pikmin throw matters. Every, every sure. little action you do can waste or save time. Well, definitely looking forward to your run, Chrism. Um, I, uh, I have the honor to be on the couch, which is, uh, <laughs> actually, he asked me to be on the couch a couple days ago. I've never played this video game before. I've played Pikmin 1 and 2. Yeah, that's good, so. that's good. So he knows uh, how to ask questions because he's never seen it. Yeah, dumb guy, they call it. That's the <laughs> style. Of. GDQ so. strategy. So guys, we're going to do a, uh, we're going to kick it back up pretty soon for Disc Guy 5, but before we do that, I want to kick it over to Scent uh, to talk a little bit about prizes. So uh, off to uh, somewhere to uh, find Scent, I believe. Prizes, <laughs> prizes, 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 prizes. Ah! Hey Spike, what's up? Oh, it's Scent. <laughs> What, what were you worried it was? Come on, man. I saw the Batman top. <laughs> <laughs> the Batman turned uh, into a shark. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Oh. And that looks awesome what you got in your hands. Oh, I got some, some great stuff over here. Let me scoot over so I can get in the frame. Oh, I'll yeah, 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 yeah. I was about to say. <laughs> so, uh, guys, All of our interviews are just going to be us getting real comfortable with each other. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of the week, you know, there's, yeah. there's going to be some photoshops we don't want to talk about. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Anyway, so guys, we got some great prizes coming up for you right now in the marathon. Disguise 5 is actually going to be your last chance to, uh, to pick up a couple of things we have running right now. Um, like, as you can see on the front table there, we have some beautiful Fire Emblem Perlers uh, sent to us by Count Gooby. Um, they don't come with the stands. Love the stands, though. Those are courtesy of Nicholas Franklin. They, they work really well on, like, any perler. I love them. But, you know, we have uh, the best lord in the Fire Emblem series, uh, you know, the most heroic uh, with the deepest, you know, personal evolution, Lynn. <laughs> and, and Elwood's there too. I mean, you know, someone had to invite him, I guess. 
We Yikes. also uh, have this lovely boxed copy of uh, Fire Emblem Ooh. Shadows of Valentia. Yeah, you know, it's it's the box. That's a video edition. game box? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a 3DS box. Oh, my, oh it's, my God. It's crazy, right? <laughs> so the game takes up about one one hundredth of the box. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> this is probably the game and then the rest of its extras, but it comes with a bunch We're, of pins. It comes with a soundtrack. There's an art book in here. Wow. Um, I mean, you know, it's, it's a super great boxed edition. Definitely love it. Moving forward, though, guys, for Disgaea and Beyond, we have a, a couple of really cool things for you. Uh, so Nipponichi Software America, or uh, NASA, as they're often known, sent us actually a, a bundle of limited editions for some of their games. Um, so, I mean, these are super cool. We have uh, The Witch and the Hundred Night 2, which is, I'm sure, picking up all of the glare possible. Uh, you know, we have <laughs> yeah, a we're old, man. wonderful little box copy here of Yomawari Night Alone. That game is super atmospheric. Definitely love it. Um, you know, we have something I didn't even know existed in box form. We have a boxed copy of RPG Maker. What? For the PlayStation 1? No, no, no for the PC, Spike. Oh, that one, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not, I'm not, used to the PS1. Not, 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 not that crazy, Spike. Calm down, <laughs> calm down. But, but still, I, I genuinely... <laughs> I genuinely did not know this was actually released as a physical disc. Wow. So, I mean, that's that's super cool. And, uh, you know, also in that bundle, whoop, it fell down. We have... Uh, Artwork's amazing. Obviously. Toho Kabuto Burst Battle 5. I, again, I've never actually seen a box copy of a Toho game that wasn't part of the main series. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, super cool that they sent us box copies of, of all these games. Uh, that's... Uh, bundle all together. Uh, so huge shout outs to NISA for that. And uh, you know, also starting uh, with this guy five, I believe we have a, a lovely little prize pack from Devolver Digital themselves uh, for the upcoming Into the Gungeon run, uh, which comes with a, a vinyl copy of the Into the Gungeon soundtrack, which looks looks super nice. And it comes with a pin. Comes with multiple pairs of socks uh, in two different designs. I mean, we all need socks. Spike, well, I'm need... about to say we're getting socks. Yeah, we're, we're getting. So I mean, Spike, be honest with me. When you were a kid, did you ever get socks for Christmas? Uh, I, I mean, yes. And they were pure white. All right, all right. You know, I, I've gotten to that like adult point in my life where I'm like, oh god, I need socks. Someone, oh yeah, no, no, someone no, please send me socks. It's always like, all right, I got socks. Now it's like, oh please. <laughs> but anyway, guys. I remember why I did laundry. No. <laughs> the, those are uh, just some of the awesome prizes we have at these events. As always, you can head over to gamesandquick.com. You can check out the tracker. It's going to have the uh, the times for those prizes. It's going to have the minimum donation amounts that you need to know. It's going to give credit to the awesome people who donated them out to us. Um, so you can always head over there and check it. And um, I think that's going to do it for us. Spike, uh, Chrisom, thank you guys so much for that amazing interview. And uh, we're going to throw it back up to the front uh, to our good friend Maple as we get ready for Disgaea 5 Alliance of Vengeance. Woo! All right, how about, you know what, how about a $10,000 donation from Funhouse? <laughs> and they say, Dear Games Done Quick, thank you for being such a positive influence in this industry. After a 24-hour stream of our own, our community raised money to help you guys out. Hope this helps reach your goals. We'll try harder next year. Now we are all going to sleep. We have an anonymous $185 donation that says, Loves me, love me some Diz Guy, dude. And now we're going to throw it to Green Sea Saber for his new game any percent speed run of Disgaea 5 Alliance of Vengeance for the Nintendo Switch. All right, we're going to need just a little bit more time on that, but in the meantime, we've got plenty more donations here. But first, how about let's take a quick moment to talk about what this whole event is for. 
Doctors Without Borders, or Médecins Sans Frontières, is a medical humanitarian organization working in more than 60 countries around the world. MSF is a private international association. They provide assistance to populations in distress, to victims of natural or man-made disasters, and to victims of armed conflict. They do so irrespective of race, religion, creed, or political convictions. Find out more at doctorswithoutborders.org. We've got a donation from Crystal Gate for $250. No comment for there, from there, but thank you very much for your generosity. We've got $10 from Supreme. Keep up the great work. Sad I can't be there this year, but excited to get to kick back with a week full of exciting runs. All right, and without further ado, here's Disgaea 5, Alliance of Vengeance. <laughs> 